bridges construction is one of the oldest yet most important type of constructions, which was first used to satisfy man's desire for exploring. The direct definition of a bridge according to Webster's dictionary is a structure built over something as water, a low place, or a railroad so people can cross. And that's exactly what ordinary people think about it, but civil engineers think of it in a very different way from their own view. It is believed that the first bridges were made of light wood and that was thousands of years ago. These bridges had high deflection rate and short spans. With time, before Roman civilization, clever bridges were designed of stones. Of course they were much better than wood, but due to their brittleness they also had low spans and were used to cross small canals or such. And with the Romans appearing, bridges construction got more hopes with the Roman coffer dam bridges, which were so unique for their time for the usage of boats as supports. No much time after, until the Roman Slamanca bridges were introduced as well. As arched breaks, they allowed for crossing longer spans. But it really wasn't until the end of 18th century when the real thing began. It is exciting to know that there are some early iron and steel bridges still in use today. The world's first cast iron bridge was built at Cold Brockdale, Telford in 1779, shown here and is still in use today carrying occasional light transport and pedestrians. Until 1840 the construction material used was either cast iron or wrought iron or a combination of both. In the early 18s cast iron was beginning to be replaced by wrought iron and many of the early railway bridges were built of rafted wrought iron construction. It was not until the late 18s that steel began to replace wrought iron and by the early 19s wrought iron was no longer available as worldwide, steel makers had moved to producing carbon steel, a much more reliable material. Chronology In 1857, Wiskill Bridge was the first large wrought iron girder railway bridge to be built in Germany. In 1863, Minangil Viaduct is the oldest existing railway bridge in Australia. It has two wrought iron rifted box girders and originally had three equal spans of 49.4 meters. However, these spans have now been halved by the addition of intermediate piers to allow the bridge to accommodate heavier loading. In 1870, Kemizoki Railway Bridge was the first three-span steel truss bridge built in Finland. Originally for a railway, this rifted bridge was converted to carry road traffic in 1923 and still now, and is still in use today as a food bridge. In 1883, Brooklyn Bridge in USA was the first steel wire and steel bridge to be built in the world. And in 1884, Gravit Viaduct Fronts, built by Jostav Evil, is one of the first wrought iron truss arch bridges to be built in the whole world. In 1888, Tenryugawa Bridge, first railway bridge built in Japan using steel. In 1890, first major steel cantilever railway bridge in the world over the falls near Edinburgh, Scotland. The force bridge shown below was designed by Benjamin Baker and built up by William Arrell with two main spans of 518 meters. It was the world's longest spanning bridge at the time of its construction and the first railway bridge with a steel superstructure. It is still in use today on the main Edinburgh to Aberdeen line. In the mid-19s, the use of welding brought major changes to the steel fabrication industry. In some countries, however, it took until the 1960s before rivets became obsolete and bolted and welded construction took over. From the 1930s, many of the large structures being built were of steel. Notable examples include 1931, George Washington Suspension Bridge in USA, 1932, Sydney Harbour Bridge in Australia, 1937, the Great Golden Gate Suspension Bridge in San Francisco, USA, and in 1966, Seven Bridge in Bristol in United Kingdom. From the 1950s to the 1980s, during the main period of United Kingdom motorway construction, the short spans and greenfield sites favored the use of concrete. However, from the 1980s, 
United Kingdom fabricators invested heavily in automation to reduce costs. And the arrival of heavy carnage in large numbers allows steelwork to be erected far more quickly in large elements. This together with the need to construct in restricted conditions made steel far more competitive in the short medium span ranges. Composite construction making the best use of concrete and steel together was shown to be the economic ideal for spans up to 65 meters. The change was initiated by a series of contractor designed steel alternative proposals to conforming concrete viaduct designs, which showed that steel was again competitive.